One um, that I would like to start with is about um, what we teach, what we in general globally as a society teach, right? One basic topic is should we also consider coding as one of the basic subjects moving forward in the sense that oftentimes we read about people saying if uh, one will not know how to code in the future, it will be as not knowing how to read and write nowadays. I, could, I, I was quite visionary about it, that everybody had to learn coding back then. I'm still thinking that a little bit, but it's changing a little bit okay. in the sense that we have like a lot of new uh, uh, products that are like uh, democratizing the access to technology, to automation. But I think that now what uh, we have to focus on is on the things that make you a better coder uh, and not necessarily the programming language. Okay. And that means uh, like uh, logical thinking, analytical thinking, uh, problem solving. Some years ago, we were all, all with all thinking coding is necessary as itself, as, as, as a subject mm -hmm. itself. But uh, now it's more important. How do you apply technology to current situations in your life? How do you combine technology with purpose? No. And how do you apply like every um, knowledge that you receive in school in a more practical way to give more time? to implement crossing um, subjects that may, helps you to situate the learning, no? I really agree, and I think this goes back to the purpose of education. I think there are uh, a, a couple of skills I wanted to mention today that I think, you know, we've been reflecting a lot at Asave, you know, uh, we develop talent, you know, what kind of talent is needed for the future impact economy. One of them is self-directed learning. People need to be able to, to direct and, and manage their own learning process um, through, through rapid changes. Um, you know, there, there's a big trend in diversity education and inclusion um, where we can see how important it is to listen to different voices, different needs and experiences. Um, another is systems thinking. That sounds very complex, um, but social problems are complex. To solve them, you know, we need to understand this complexity. We need to break free of this linear um, you know, mechanistic type of thinking. Um, and the last one is uh, that I'll comment on today is resilience. Um, really the ability to work through frustration. Should everyone learn coding? Mm -hmm. I don't know that everybody should learn coding, but I, you know, I would feel reassured if, you know, if, uh, if we have a very diverse, you know, entrepreneurs, very diverse um, uh, developer mm -hmm. and development teams working on these problems, then I would feel reassured that the solutions that we're developing and, and the system towards which we're moving um, will work for work for more people. Yes, so from an internal perspective, there are several startups that provide content on mm -hmm. how to teach or like being self-directed in the way you mm -hmm. learn. It's not just e-learning, it's not just LMS, mm -hmm. but it's much more than that. So also this interaction within people. Yet, governments are investing a lot of money, like I can take example of Italy, there are funds that provides uh, money to mm -hmm. corporates and to training organizations to push uh, like digital skills mm -hmm. and especially sustainability topics because maybe out of your pocket you wouldn't buy it but with the funds itself the training organizations can sponsor their mm -hmm. courses so that they can provide knowledge and the corporate can use it in order to uh to acquire more knowledge well that's reverse mentoring so governmental funds and startups providing content, it's, it's pretty present, so yes. Do you think kind of four years, three years, five years uh, degrees in universities like will continue existing and also make sense? Or um, should we also envision some sort of change into that direction? The main change that we'll make or we'll, we will see in education is that swift from receiving content mm -hmm. to discovering our potentials. And, and it's more like, Instead of receiving, getting out, us, mm -hmm. no, discovering ourselves and um, and and put ourselves to the to the service of the society, no. But at the same time, we want to enable social interaction in what matter that skills within our, in organizations are transferred among one another. Well, you need to have infrastructure that enable is called social learning skills and competencies is where the corporate are pushing a lot. Like let's understand the competency that we have in our company and this more or less is done. Let's understand the goals, but then the goals are based on competence frameworks. So I want to become a project manager in a certain industry. What are the competencies do I, do I need? So based on what I know and what I want to achieve, then I have a gap. How do I cover this gap? Mm -hmm. Well, I have internal skills. Yes. We need also external providers. And so that 
become basically a marketplace or the way I like to call it an ecosystem. Who comes to you as a customer and like, do you also see this uh, profile? So like a split maybe between mm -hmm. younger students and someone that already has a professional career? Yeah. We have l like lots of profiles, yeah, but uh, they want to do it into an approach that is more like let's work already. Yeah, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's get it. I think that that's a, actually a great idea. It's like the concept of failing faster. Mm -hmm. No, it's like, it's like uh, you go into this immersive program, you start a career, you work for two uh, years already, but you have all these insights mm -hmm. about the market, about yourself, about if you like this career, if you want to pivot a little bit, if you want to do a, a, a complete uh, turn. Mm -hmm. no? Totally randomly, but today at lunch, I was talking to someone and they were telling me that they've actually seen people uh, that are, let's say, around about 28 to 30 years old getting a second bachelor degree. Because they realized that probably the first one they took was, let's say, more traditional. Mm -hmm. And so then kind of choosing something with, let's say, a more modern somehow curriculum that uh, included more uh, sustainability, personal development topics and so on. Before we studied or we had an, uh, an idea of stability in our lives and, and education was our path to stability. Nowadays young people, they are not thinking about stability. They haven't grown up in an, estab in, in an established mm -hmm. world. They, they've grown up uh, surrounded by change, surrounded by evolution. So it's becoming super, super urgent to renovate these uh, pr uh, learning processes because now it's, uh, well, we are, we are living with that change right now. There are alternatives to university, like there are uh, programs that you don't pay you will only pay when you get mm -hmm. hired, like this, uh, like Stride School, or you yeah. go Income through share agreements. Exactly. Like or uh, governments are pushing a lot more vocational, professional mm -hmm. training programs that is you do your high school and then you go and do these, these courses. What is the role of technology in general and AI in particular um, in about the delivery or about connecting people and specifically what, uh, what about AI? Right? I'm educating my like my students mm -hmm. on how to use ChatGPT because that's a 24/7 um, assistant that you have. Yeah, and what to trust and what not to that much. No, what what needs like more um, supervision. Let's say educating how to use this kind of AI that can guide you through the process. But I think that that's a great potential because we are all going to have like an assistant on that. Also, say that technology is not a solution to in the education technology space. Technology is common, is an enabler that can be used sometimes, not always, because then it's connected to what Pina, you were saying, it has to have a purpose in what it provides. For example, again, we want to talk about metaverse because in education technology is like a big trend. I'm not today too much of a fan of it because does it solve real problems? Sometimes yes, sometimes it's more of a game rather than uh, a methodology used to solve problems. The eruption of technology uh, like defies the whole system, no? Because yes. you don't have to give anymore the content itself because you have that on your iPhone and on your iPad and on chat GPT. The other day I saw a survey. Why do your children, why do, why do you think it's important for, for your children to go to school? No one said because they have to learn geography or history. It's because they have to socialize. They have to learn from their from their colleagues. They have it's a way of getting in touch with diversity. Technology will force mm -hmm. that change of a school, the position of a school in the society, and the position of teachers in society, and the role of teachers. No, but it defies the whole system. Think of the new society we need to construct and uh, teach. Uh, change makers of that society. No? Um, but I also, I think, you know, technology has um, also really the promise of scale um, and reaching learners mm -hmm. that maybe haven't had the opportunities before. But here again, I think there's a real question about, you know, whose needs are being listened to, you know, for whom are these solutions appropriate? Because we have AI models that can basically learn and understand what each individual student needs or what is their pace of learning, that based on a curricula, the, the curriculum that's curated by some experts, then uh, groups in the same class can be learning at very different speeds the same topics. What we were trying to do um, at Lumen um, was to 
I mean, it was a competency-based approach, you know, that would identify the, the learning outcomes and provide feedback to the students based on um, where they are, mm -hmm. um, how they're doing, um, and then also provide um, insights to the, the faculty um, regarding how the different students are doing, which students might need some help, um, you know, with which mm -hmm. particular learning outcomes do they need help, um, what kinds of content could be useful. The role and with the role, the skill set of the teacher have to change. And does that have to happen very quickly? The other challenge we are we will face in this teacher training and mm, technology eruption is the inequality mm -hmm. we will face again. Technology implementation and teacher training is expensive, both in cost and in time. How many schools do you know that are implementing innovative pedagogies? I don't know, 0 0.5 schools are implementing it. And at what cost? Normally are the yeah. most expensive schools mm -hmm. in each uh, city. How do you scale that to the other schools? That For me, that nowadays is the biggest challenge we, we have, not right. to create a, a huge gap, a social uh, economical gap on, on learning. It's like how can we compete with the content that is out there? I'm going to have the best content to teach uh, software engineering and for free. Yeah. Actually, what we have to do is, and what we can offer that others cannot, is that figure of myself or my of my of my team of engineers, uh, which came from really good companies that can uh, guide you through that consumption of our content and all the free content that we don't hide from them. We give access, like uh, see this YouTube channel is like, it has great content, but we're mentors and mentorship is really expensive. It's this concept of continuous feedback before, during and after, which is simple. Like, what do you expect? What do you know? What is your goal? At least I know at the beginning. And so the trainer then has the goal to take that and adapt the way they, they teach. The content is still there. Like, you do a negotiation course, you do a leadership course. Well. The fundamentals are still there, but the way you deliver it, so that just simply having more communication is not top down, is is much more social. Uh, the way ter uh, training is is turning into the the same swift that the teacher will make, parents will make. So it's like Susanta said, no, it's not about telling the kid or 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 your son about gravity. It's about helping these kids to think by themselves, no, and to it's, it will be new type of homework, it's asking questions. It's, uh, I think the role of the teacher and the parent will shift from answering the questions to make questions to the children. We have difficult access because of the cost of opportunity. We have difficult access to, to great talent, to be mentors, but we need them to work in the, in the industry. So why not? So we were, we were thinking about also creating like a marketplace of verified uh, mentors that can give you like that guidance and that kind of like, um, midterm relationship, uh, with that mentor that you can engage with. And I, I can see that happening. I took a tech stars course on like the way VC work and that was self-directed, but hybrid. So you were doing your e-learning, but you had assignments and then with groups, you were you had to meet and uh, solve your, your assignments. So there can be fully, fully remote, but then people interact with one another is what helps that because the dropout is very, very common. So this kind of force you to, uh, to do the work because you are responsible for the others and they are responsible for you. So you have this social pressure as well. To make it work. If we go to a much shorter time horizon, so 2023, what do you think will be the most significant uh, technology trend uh, impact on education that will happen during this year? I would say aggregation ecosystems, like a lot of interaction among the, the players in, uh, in one industry. And that, of course, there are some mergers or some mm -hmm. acquisition that happen in that the space. We still have to see, uh, it's got, GPT-4 is going to be released and then we're going to see uh, like some crazy things happening. Uh, in K-12, I believe it will be two uh, first steps to competence learning and uh, integrated learning, how to address diversity in the mm -hmm. classroom. One thing I would love to see happen this year, short term, um, is to see impact investors taking more active interest in the ed, ed tech space. Thank you all very, very much uh, for being here and for your insights. And let's continue the conversation as well uh, afterwards. If you want to. Thank you.